Atlas, Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to Krypton Report. Up in the sky, look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's the Krypton Report! Welcome to the Krypton Report Podcast, presented by the Southgate Media Group. The all things Kryptonian podcast, including Superman and Supergirl. We discuss games, movies, cartoons, TV shows, and comics. Krypton Report Pod can be found on Facebook, Twitter, Skype, YouTube, and Instagram. And if you want to drop us a line, send it to kryptonreportpod at gmail.com. We are on Patreon under Southgate Media Group. And our official merch page is tpublic.com. Search Krypton Report. Now on with the show. So this episode of Krypton Report is very special. We have a very special guest that I don't want to spoil, but I do want to say that we interviewed someone awesome. It's live. James and I did it. It was late for us. There were some technical difficulties throughout, so we're going to try to clean it up as much as we can. So we do apologize as there may be some fading, some inconsistencies. But we want to bring you the rawness of the interview because we had a great time talking. It was like three guys just chilling and talking. It was a blast. James and I had such a great time. We hope to have this guest on again. And without further ado, here's the episode for us. <laughs> yeah. I just got over being sick. Though my, uh, though my Superman cave is impressive. Um, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. His fortress. Uh, yeah. Cool, it just, man. And I mean, it's I mean, thing, uh, yeah. the kids are asleep, so I don't have to worry too much. Usually, right, right. I hate doing video because that's when my son's like, Daddy, Daddy, what you doing? Daddy. <laughs> No, I hear you. And unfortunately, I'm pretty new to the whole podcasting thing, so most of the time I Skype off my phone. Oh, okay. That's cool. I, I'm on I'm on my Surface right now, so I have like a little uh, closet uh, office slash studio. So, mm-hmm. that's, well, you, uh, you ready to get started? Kick off this good old fashioned Griswold family Christmas. <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> I was just like, I'm sorry like, it took so long to make it happen, man. Oh, hey, it's fine. I've had some shakeups in life, and you're a busy man. Yeah, yeah. We just had a lot of we had a lot of stuff going on in the last year between our mostly just you know a lot of family stuff. So it's just hard to make the time. Today we have a very special guest. We have the voice of Rao. Basically, the voice of God. <laughs> we have Superman himself with us today, Uh-oh. Mr. Jason J. Lewis. Welcome, Jason. Hello, everybody. Good to have good to be aboard. Jason is the current voice of Superman on the Justice League action cartoon series on Cartoon Network. And if you hadn't checked it, if you haven't checked it out, you should, because it's a blast. <laughs> it's a good time. Solo and I watch it all the time. That's so cool. I love that. <laughs> and that's your kid's name, Solo. His name his name is Solomon, and his oh. name is, is Solo, and it's short. And he he refers to himself in the third person, so it's pretty cool. He's like, "This is Solos." <laughs> but I I'm excited, Jason. We have we have talked before about trying to get together and do this, and you know, mm-hmm. life happens and. Well, here we are. Here we are, finally making it happen. I love it, man. Thank you for having me. Thanks oh. for keep uh, pursuing me. Too. Oh, no problem. Thank you. I mean, um, Solomon and I, we do a tradition. Like, we started uh, just re-watching Justice League action from the beginning. And because they're so short, I kind of do it as, all right, Solomon. And I'll say it's nighttime. And he'll be like, no, Daddy, I don't want to go to bed yet. I'll be like, all right, we'll do one Justice League and then bed. <laughs> so that's kind of that's kind of been our little thing at night is we'll watch an episode and then he knows okay I gotta go to bed now. That's that's perfect, man. That's what those episodes are great about. Play it, yeah. yeah, I mean, I was a little when they first announced the series and they talked about it being these short things. I was like, huh, I didn't really feel. But yeah, I wonder what that noise is. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. 
Someone's beard scratching on the microphone there. Or? No, I, I'm, I'm pretty much clean shaven. I, I got oh. <laughs> <laughs> my mic hangs low. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> but you, we were talking yeah, about the golden age feel of the scripts. Yeah, yeah. I I feel like you know every time we got a script, it, it just felt like I was reading an, an old golden age comic book, or silver age comic book. It had that feel to it. It clipped along. It was like you know a lot of every character arcs or setup because we all understood and in every episode was so fun and pulled a lot of the golden age comics and I just really appreciated that I knew that fans were too so that, that was my thing. and I, I mean I definitely see that in there uh, so you're talking about the golden age when did you get into comics I mean were you a Superman fan beforehand like what got you into the character um <laughs> Um, I mean, I'd always been a Superman fan since I was since I was a kid. I think watching uh, Superman one and two, uh, I don't remember what age. I honestly don't remember what age I saw them. I I want to say I was around ten or eleven, perhaps at that point. But I mean, that was when you know you want to see those things, mm-hmm. and um, and that was that was really awesome for me. I I think it was interesting because I had a slightly different expectation of of the movies when we're thinking like. Oh, this is, this is so slow, and sometimes there's not a lot of action. <laughs> but uh, but I remember uh, as I got older, just really appreciating it, and even watching the, the motion picture. Uh, not within the last year or two, it's just really like it's just, it's amazing what an what a accomplished film it is, and what a what a what a huge piece of narrative it is. It's really good, and. Uh, I would say that it's it was that that kind of got me into Superman. I mean, comics didn't come along until I was a little bit older. Um, I had friends that read comics. And it was really when I kind of saw the 89. I don't, I don't know. I haven't had this problem before, so. Yeah, no, that's okay. I mean, I, I, hey, I'm wondering if something on my end uh, could be causing it. I'm, I'm just on my computer mic. Did Lex Luthor show up? Damn. Probably, man. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> trying to he's, trying to sabotage always, the podcast. <laughs> James Woods for this go around, which was uh, interesting. Was awesome. We were talking about like I. It's okay. So we're both gonna. I'm gonna say this right now. We're both big fans of your vo- of your voice work as Superman. Oh, thank you guys. I really appreciate that. You're thank welcome. you so much. Like you're you're in the top three, and there's no. <laughs> I can't pick an order. Because I think each one of you represents something, but I mean, for the mm-hmm. long time, it's been George mm-hmm. Laverne and Tim Daly, mm-hmm. and now right. you you join that grouping. In my thanks, opinion, like, man. that that's huge. That's really huge because there's a. I didn't realize how many guys had voiced them until I kind of started doing the research. And you know, you've got different universes. You've got the, the animated series. You've got the the J, the, the original Justice League. You've got, uh, and then you got all the direct to video stuff. It, yeah. It's, it's, they pick a, you know, Jerry O'Connell seems to kind of do it, but then they've had Tim's son and the uh, Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of them. And I think, you know, Jerry O'Connell's doing a great job in those mm-hmm. films. And, but I just, we were talking about it before we, you got on here. It's just like, uh, and what makes me want, on the questions I wanted to ask was, would you want to do the vocal work of Superman in another like if they approached you and said, "Hey, Jason, would you yeah. want to do like the video game, or would you want to do one of these direct video movies or something? Would you want to carry your Superman vocal work from the cartoon more into a serious realm?" Or well, in the great words of, of Winston Sedimore, "There's a steady paycheck involved. I'll do anything you say." <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> um, but yeah, my I mean, favorite I would Ghostbuster. Be... I'm just throwing that out there. He, he got the <laughs> yeah. shaft, but he was my favorite. He's like, I'll he believe did. anything. Yeah, he, he gets kind of forgotten. Uh, but no, I, uh, I would, I'd be so eager to be a part of anything else in the DC family that they would invite me to. You know, I, I truly believe, I mean, these things have a way of coming back around. So I truly believe that this is not the, you know, this is not the last time I might do this. I think there'll be some other opportunities, but, but nothing's been, you know, brought up to me yet, but I, I just really, you know, the way these things kind of are cyclical, you know, uh, you just never know what's going to happen. I really hope they'll reach out to me. Um, everyone, 
you know, the, the feedback I got from the writing team and the production team was that they were all incredibly happy. With it. And, uh, yeah. You know, the we feedback are, from PR yeah. seemed to be. We the fans are happy with it. Like, uh, anyway. So, I mean, you're doing a great job. I mean, thanks, man. Yeah, we were I, just I talking really about it. if you want to, like, it, it, we're, we're fans of the Rocksteady games and hope, hoping that they're, you know, developing a Superman game. And we were, we were talking yes. about if you were to, to be, you know, go from the Justice League action to more serious, um, game in, in that Arkham vein there that, that would be, that would be pretty awesome. Yeah. Dude, I would, I would just absolutely jump at the chance. I, I mean, I, I would hope they would, would consider me, of course, but the way things typically work is, and have been working. I mean, even when we auditioned for this show, they put it out to everybody again. They, cause I think the, 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 a lot of the time they don't always know what they want up front. They're kind of like, let's put it out there and see what they mm. put back. And, um, but you know, I, I would hope that I would be in line to get it. Uh, some kind of an offer, but, uh, it's interesting because they have this weird, it seems they have this weird perception that when, uh, the universe changes, then we need a new voice to represent that universe. And unless at least Kevin when it, <laughs> uh, unless you're Kevin Conroy. Yes, exactly. And that's what I was going to say is like, at least with Superman, that seems to be the case, but I kind of wonder on some level if that's just because they're not like finding a, exactly what they want. And, um, you know, I don't know. I don't know if that's just a Superman thing or what that is. But yeah, Kevin Conroy seems to have like set the bar. But I think that is also really fan based. That's fan driven. I mean, he comes back because they know that that's what the fans yeah. identify Batman. You know, and he's really amazing. Of course, he's a great actor. But, but I mean, there's also that component. So, but I think they just go, you know, why not? Kevin's so great. Fans love. Him. And I why not? I think you have that voice too, like that you could, you know, given some more material, like in a little bit mm -hmm. of a different vein with Superman. I think you have that, that caliber of reaching. Um, thanks, man. You're, you're, you're welcome. I'm just, I'm just being upfront, man. I'm just being honest. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I, I hear there's, with, with Superman, there's, there's like a, a, a levity in the character where there's a softness that even when he is angry, there's still this comfort in his voice. And I think, uh, you don't want to come off sounding harsh as Superman, even no. when you, when you need to, there's still this like comfort in it. And that's, you know, that's a big part, I think, of the character. Um, yeah, for sure. So here's a couple other Superman questions. And then we're going to kind of segue yeah. a little bit more into, uh, you. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Hey, Man, thanks. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> what, who would win in a fight, Batman or Superman? Well, I think we all know that answer. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think Superman would have no problem winning in a fight, but I don't think Batman would be at all easy to take down. So. <laughs> uh, what? I think, I think, I think the thing is, I think Batman knows Superman would likely win in a fight. Yes. Um, you know, so, uh, I don't think he's really questioning that. Batman's not really questioning that. I just think he's, he's like, I'm definitely not going to go out down without him. <laughs> There's that. Why he has, you know, kryptonite gas and things and sorts of good things. <laughs> you know, keeping his arsenal in case Superman goes crazy. Asking if he carries that kryptonite ring with him everywhere. <laughs> yes, that was one of my favorite <laughs> moments in that's, it. In this show. That's, that's one of our favorite episodes. Solomon yeah. just loves it because he loves the cyborg and he just loves, I don't know, he just loves that episode. We watched that one probably more than any other episode. That was a fun one to record, uh, because me and Rachel were, were the only ones that got to record with, uh, uh, Ken Jeong. And, uh, we, it was the three of us. I don't think, was there something else? I don't think there was. I think it was just the three of us when we recorded that episode. And, uh, you know, cause, uh, everyone was is so stinking busy all the time. Um, but it was great that we got to record together and he's so perfect for toy man, you know, mm -hmm. just so. And I distinctly remember that session because we read through that. I mean, we had all come in pretty prepared and, and Ken's like such an amicable guy. And we just immediately, all three of us really hit it off. And, and we started into the, to usually how we do it is, is, uh, 
Wes, the director, Wes Gleason, he would uh, have us do like, you know, we'll do like one read through of the script with like, just kind of like, let's get the feel of it. And then he would give us a few notes and then we'd go back and kind of again. And then that would probably be our, you know, take. If we needed any more than that, we would just do touch ups from there. But most of the time we got the scripts done. And those kind of, in that, in that. But I remember, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we kind of blazed through that script. It was so much fun. And I want to say, I don't think we went back and did a second take. Wes was so happy with everything. That's the way cool. that, that kind of came out, the first run of it, it was, it was awesome. <laughs> it's a really fun thing. That's, and, uh, that's really cool. Cause I was wondering, like, I was going to ask you how, you know, um, I'm not overly familiar with voice acting as far as how it's recorded. And I, uh-huh. I've listened to people talk about how, you know, Batman the Animated Series did things where they had them all in the room together, like an old radio show. And mm-hmm. I've seen mm-hmm. the documentary. Like, I know that voice and you kind of get an idea mm-hmm. of how recording is. And so I was going to ask you, like, how a lot of your sessions go, or is it mm-hmm. you by yourself or do you get to work with somebody? Well, they they made it a big deal when we first auditioned that, you know, they wanted to have everyone together as, as much as possible. That was part of the requirement that you were in L.A., that you could you could record unless of course you were a celebrity and you could do whatever you wanted. Um, but I think they were really trying to go with a fresh cast at first. Um, and then they just kind of said, well, let's bring some names back into it because they really wanted the, the show. So, um, and, and so we, yeah, and it, and it makes sense, you know, and, and so the, um, but that's one reason I think I had the opportunity here to, to kind of come into this is they really wanted to kind of have some fresh faces, fresh faces. And, uh, so that's why I, and I was, I was very fortunate that they, they kept me and Rachel. I, I love both of your voices. I mean, um, you both, it's weird how you can like with, with these DC animated films, there's been different people do mm-hmm. voices. And sometimes you watch one, you're like, ah, Okay. <laughs> like, I see what you were trying, but I'm just, I'm not, I don't like this voice. It doesn't feel like the character to me. And then you'll hear that one that you're like, yeah, I can hear that. That, yeah. that, that works. And, um, for them, for everybody on, uh, you know, Justice League action, I feel the character other than, and I hate saying it, James Woods. I hear James Woods. <laughs> Well, you know, it's funny because, uh, we were, uh, the very first session I had, he, he recorded his stuff first, um, because he actually wasn't there. He was remote in Rhode Island and, um, you know, was recording from, from his studio. And, uh, but we got to listen to it because we, we asked, I said, can we listen just so we can like have some reference? And they were kind of, you know, Wes was like, absolutely. Like, please do, you know, like, get, get, get the feel of it. And I remember hearing it thinking like, wow, that's going to sound really maniac. And awesome. And, uh, and, and in a way, it's like, yeah, it is just James Woods, but I mean, in a way, if, if you read his Twitter, you look at all the other things he said, actually, come No. Yeah, and, and what was really fun to play as, uh, as the series kind of, so I never got to record with him, but, uh, one of the animation directors, uh, Jake Castorina, he he would tell me when he would watch this stuff put together, he'd just be like, man, your Superman's like so pure and so great. He's just so kind. It really actually makes it dynamic. Yeah. Wait. So, um, but I hear you. It's, it's, it's okay. I think, you know, that's what we call, um, you know, in the business, we call that a voice with character. We, we know it's James, but it's, he's not doing a lot of affectation or changing his voice a lot, but that's why he's on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's kind of what, yeah, I would, I would argue that, you know, there are some of the best, I think, I think those guys actually tend to work a little more because they're not, they're, they're acting so well. Uh, it's just their, it's just the quality of voice and the kind of thing they bring to the table. You know, I think of a guy like Lorenzo Music, um, uh, Garfield. You know, mm. Back in the day. And that, that guy was just, I mean, he was the same voice in almost everything he did. 
but it was his acting and the style that he brought to it that everyone wanted him for. And he, when he would do something else, you would immediately go, oh, that's, that's Lorenzo, no question. Um, but we also knew that was perfect, you know? <laughs> so, so I think that's, that's just one of those things where you just know, hey, it's just the brand that they bring. And I can agree with that. I mean, I can see there's nothing wrong with that at all. <laughs> Excuse mm-hmm. me. No, but that's just uh, that's one of the kind of aspects of voice acting that you know a lot of people don't really always see up front. We always think of voice acting as an actor being able to do these vocal acrobatics of doing all these different voices, but all of us agree, all the all of the actors, the voice actors agree that voice acting starts with acting. Apparently, if you could do all those other acrobatics, that's great. But if you have no acting foundation. And you don't have really any wherewithal to understand making choices and what you're doing to the other character, even though you're not on stage or on a camera with them. You know, that's that's going to really put you at a disadvantage because, and you're not going to sound as genuine. So um, that's that's kind of what we talk about a lot in, in classes and things like that. It's you know, voice acting is just that. It's acting first. You know, you can do the acrobatics. That's fun. It's great as long as it can still be backed up with. Great. Um, so with that, let's see here. I, I got some more questions about with voice acting. Mm-hmm. What, what got you into being more of a voice actor? Um, I, you know, it's funny because my journey to, I, I was not like, when I was younger, it was never like a, I have to be a voice actor. It wasn't like anything that I was like, I, I was a burning desire when I was younger, but I will say that I always was doing impressions and would always be the guy at the party yucking it up and, and, you know, have fun with people and, you know, and impersonating my friends and things like that. And it was, but I will say I gained a whole new appreciation for, for voice acting when I saw, and this was the film, remember, it was Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Um, and I saw that, and that was the last film with, with Mel Blanc, I think, and uh, with some of the old school, the original school of voice acting. And that film blew my mind when I real when it kind of really, I mean, I knew that, that Mel Blanc voice, but it really dawned on me, like, that's one doing, like, the loony twist. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and then some of the greats that were in that film, you know, um, was in there, which was in there. You know, the guy who brought Rabbit, uh, Charles Flesh, that was kind of one of his things, but he brought, like, such a character to that, that was the voice that I want, you know? And, uh, that, and when I, so I start, I mean, per, trying to impersonate Rock Rabbit, and when I, be, I went back and saw it, like, eight or nine times in the theater, I think. Wow. Because um, I was just in, into the movie, and also wanting to listen to really get the voice done. And uh, I finally did, and when I did, it was like what I think I had done was you know, unbeknownst was train my ear to look for those things. And so I started a lot of impressions. I was in my uh, my godfather, uh, um, Donald. He always did this amazing Donald. Impression. And I remember as a kid, that is awesome. like <laughs> I that is I I do that, and it was. The re- it was him impression that caught people want to like do it, you know. Uh, so then, but I always, uh, I always wanted to be, you know, just an actor, whether it be on camera, camera or whatever. But that was always my main trajectory was pursuing on camera, and you know, really to have a I'm definitely a character, I'm not typical, but uh, but I, I that was a much harder. Uh, harder and uh, voice act was uh, coming naturally. I had a really great opportunity. Uh, I started at the University Studio uh, here in LA. Uh, we, Hold on one uh, second. Let's get. Are you guys here Matt? Yeah, it's really weird. Yeah. Yeah, kind of choppy like, on my end. Yeah, like, it just comes like it's. And then all of a sudden it goes away. Yeah, kind of in, out, in, out. God. There's like... Weird. So order. That's perfect. Okay. So, uh, you were t- the school that you were going in L.A., that's where you were when it got really bad. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I'm, I was working at, you know, working at Universal Studios. 
um, in 2004, and I was uh, playing Donkey, and DreamWorks wanted to send us to uh, Dallas to promote the Shrek 2 DVD release with Walmart. And so they, the puppet that we were using in the park, they, they actually paid to send to this huge convention in Dallas for Walmart. And we begin, so we were paid to entertain there for the week, you know. And uh, it was a blast. But what we didn't know was that, you know, Jeffrey Katzenberg and all the big wigs of DreamWorks at that time were going to be there watching us. <laughs> so, and so that was uh, a bit stunning. And, and so one morning uh, they came by with their whole entourage and, and Jeffrey heard me doing what I was doing. And he was, he asked who I was and it wasn't a couple of weeks later that they were calling Universal going, Hey, we'd like him to come in and read this. And, and it was such a whirlwind of a thing. It was truly a Hollywood story <laughs> in the purest sense of the word. And it was just uh, an amazing, I, I just, I still can't believe it to this day that that, that was that having to come in to, to read the scratch for, uh, the scratch track for Shrek 3. And if you don't know what that is, um, that's the, the temporary track. It's usually like the first draft. Mm -hmm. so, um, and they'll usually play it alongside the uh, story just to kind of get the feel for the script how it's um, but they don't they don't typically begin the main actors to be uh, expensive and they just you know they don't they don't need the main guys they just need if they can get someone that can match the voice really well they really help us uh, and so that was amazing. And then I, I, I took that gig to an agent, uh, my current, uh, West Stevens at Fox. And uh, they said, well, we'll, we'll take you on for a little bit. This is a pretty cool thing. And yeah, what you do. And, and, uh, if you book, we'll sign you. And uh, so it's like, it's pilot, it didn't go anywhere, but they were like, that's awesome. It's and, and, uh, since uh, uh, 2000. So. That's really awesome. That's how it, you know, it started. And then you, it's really wild, man. Like I, 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 I still look back on it and go, it's, it, you know, I, 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 I really look at it as just, you know, prov providence and <laughs> God's will and all that stuff. You know, it just feels like very, you know, I, no matter, I, it's like that. Uh, I wasn't pursuing voice acting hardcore and. It kind of, you know, regardless, uh, that, that was a really cool thing and kind of like, hey, this is clearly in your path, you know. And, uh, but I will say that I have, I really love craft voice and I love, I love, I love acting in general, whether it's behind a mic, in front of a camera, or on stage. That's kind of my thing. Uh, I consider it any less or more doing one or the other, you know. Yeah. Um, have you uh, ever done any like, on stage? Like, did you do stage plays in school, or do you do any professionally? Mm -hmm. Or yeah, I did. I did a lot of theater in high school. I mean, like, I was, you know, when I realized I couldn't really hit a baseball, uh, tragically. Uh, I love it. I uh, I decided to try. To, maybe I should stick to theater. And, uh, and cause I was doing speech meets and I was doing really well in speech meets when I was in junior high and elementary school. And, and so I just started doing theater and I actually, I was doing little plays in elementary school. And, and I remember distinctly thinking in second grade when I got on stage uh, to do a little show, I was like, everyone was so like nervous. And I just was like, this is fun. Like I was, I was not afraid to be in front of people at all. And. Uh, it was a blast, and uh, and it's still it. I still get confused about having an audience. That's what, that's what's really here. Like um, right now, I live in a small town. Mm -hmm. We have a community theater, and my wife, her sister, my mother-in-law are all part of it, and myself. And that's I'm great. Proposing next year, I want to direct. Actually, uh, I'm in. The, Process of submitting the application to do as a planet Superman. Oh, I'm really losing you guys. I'm sorry. Okay, we're back. 
I feel like we're getting dra- I feel like we're getting dragged through dirt. <laughs> Are we in the Phantom Zone? <laughs> yeah, Phantom Zone. Yeah, we're in the Phantom Zone. Uh, no, but I'll say, I submitted. I'm working on a submission to direct and mm-hmm. do. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman here in our local. Oh theater. no way! The old Superman musical. Yeah, because that's you know, great. I, I oh my couple, gosh, that's so fun. Because everyone knows I'm a big Superman fan, and like I've you know I've co-directed some plays and I've worked on stuff, and I just was like, you know, we need a a play that would be fun that would bring in some crowds, and they had a really rough year this year. The theater yeah. did. So I'm hoping that'll go well, you know, over next year. We'll see. Um, Dude, I think that's so great, man. I want to encourage you, uh, you know, first of all, great job for getting that show up because it's not mounted enough, you know. Um, it's not. And I, d- I don't understand what today's, like, culture, like, why that's not one that's seeked out. So, I'll be yeah. making the trip down if that happens. Oh, I know you What's will. That? <laughs> What's that? What's that? We, Jason, we ironically just found each other, uh, James and I, over the podcast. He was listening and to my earlier Krypton Report episodes, and we're just messaging on Facebook. And he lives in Akron, and I live right outside Columbus, Ohio. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Small world. That's great. <laughs> Toledo. Toledo, oh, yeah. Ohio. That's what I meant. Yeah. Man, it's late. Ohio. <laughs> yep. Uh, no, that's right great. I, uh, my wife created. Is... What's that? said right right in ohio where superman was created yeah i know i know i think that's really cool that's i mean and actually i've wanted to go to metropolis several times um i've even emailed the the festival saying hey guys if you want me to come they never got back to this i'll uh <laughs> I'll, I'll send out some messages i know some peeps <laughs> oh yeah oh good that, that's very I'll go. cool i thought jason's really cool bring him down uh well you know i I really wanted to go because it was the 80th anniversary of Superman this year, and I, I just to thought, you know, it'd be really fun to, to be a part of that. And you know, they were they were very excited. They got Dean Kane as well. They should be. So, um, you know, <laughs> so I was like, I can't compete with. <laughs> no, it's rough. It's rough. Yeah, but but I would like to participate in it because I think it's a really great thing. And um, I I love I see your picture here even in front of the statue of Superman, and I think that's awesome. I, yeah, that was I, my uh, my birthday present. My wife surprised me. She said uh-huh. we go on a two day like road trip. Um, my mom's gonna watch Solomon, and she gave me all these like weird gifts. Like and I didn't put them together as we were driving. She gave me uh, the first one was a chocolate bird. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. So, it's a bird. It's a plane. Exactly. And then uh, our next like time we stopped for gas, she gave me an eraser that had the plane from planes on it. <laughs> and she's driving and it's at night. So like she's told me not that's to That's really it. clever, man. Major uh, pro. And the last one was uh, she got me a Superman ring. And then oh. that's when I opened that. And I kind of realized where we were headed because we were real close um, to it. Mm-hmm. She, revealed it so my wife's awesome that's that's a really special thing oh my gosh that's really great man and, I, wanted, <laughs> I wanted to go for celebration but at the same time like i wanted to go before so we could go to the museum check it out or the, and not be bombarded with people and then uh-huh. go back for celebration having been to the museum and kind of enjoy the celebration aspect because the museum is amazing yeah that's great. I, I've not seen the museum at all. So. Oh, oh, man. Like, if you ever get a chance to, they had um, they had George Reeves costume here yeah. at Columbus for like 10 bucks for a ticket. I thought about going to this museum just to see it. It was yeah. $5 to go in the Superman Museum. And they have a costume <laughs> from everybody except I don't – they didn't have Ralph and they didn't have anything from Cavill at the time. But uh, the other I, version of the character, there was some sort of like – artifact and clothing from the series is okay as well as props i mean it's i would pay 20 bucks to walk through that thing if i had to oh my gosh that's really cool man that's I've, james have you been to that no um it is on my to-do list and uh i'm probably gonna go to metropolis next year that's that's the goal that's that's the goal we're shooting for um try to get down there oh, hey together. hang on one second fellas hang on yeah. one sec okay okay When he comes back, I'm going to tell him that we're just going to take a random road trip. 
<laughs> Why not? Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, fellas. Oh, you're. Oh, no problem. Yeah, no. Me and Tyler were talking about just randomly one day, just hopping in a car and and driving to Metropolis. Just. Yeah, man. <laughs> just go. <laughs> well, I uh, my wife is from um, she's from the Detroit area, so um, not terribly far. Nice. Yeah. I've been trying and to get to Detroit. Like 45 minutes. Yeah, I've it's been trying to get to Detroit for the past two years for the Comic Con there, but just it always falls at a weird time when I just can't get off work. When is the Comic Con there? It's Motor City. Motor City Comic. Oh, and what is what when is that usually going down? Um, I want to say in June. June sounds. Say that was only just a couple of months ago, I believe. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like June. Oh, that'd be fun. I'd love to go to that. Gosh, that'd be, that'd be a blast. So, I, I, it's funny because I, I don't know. There are these guys that show up at the Comic Con all the time, you know, and, and I'm like, how do you guys get invited to these things and meet people? <laughs> I just, that, it's a world that I'm not that tied into. I mean, I love going to Comic Cons, but I'm not like, you know, I think, I think maybe people would want to see me. I don't know, but like, <laughs> I would, I'd be like, hey, Jason. Yeah, I know. I'd be like, let's come, come say hi. I'll sign a picture for you. It'd be fun. Um, but I, I <laughs> did do a really small one last year in North Carolina, and that was actually a blast. What, which part of North Carolina? Oh, uh, gosh. Uh, Cape Carteret. You know that there's, uh, you know that if you look it up, there's actually a bat cave, North Carolina. <laughs> no, I did not know that. <laughs> yes. My, my wife and I lived in North Carolina for a year, one of the best years of no. our life. And we were just like looking up stuff and we found it and we wanted to drive down there one day, but we just, we never got around to it. Uh, <laughs> what part of North Carolina were you in? Uh, King, right outside Winston-Salem. Oh, okay. Okay. I got you. My, my folks are actually living out there too. They live in Clayton, which is not far from Raleigh. Okay. And it's, it's, yeah. it's a nice state to live in. Like I really, uh, mm. enjoy living there and I always like to live near a city, but in a small town outside a city. Right. It's the small villain. Eh? <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I, I hear you on that one. I, I've grown up in the LA area, so I don't really, I, I, small does not really fit into my equation too well. So. <laughs> I, I, I do have a quick question here for you, Jason. I wanted to ask, yeah. uh, I was looking over my wife and I were, she's helped me type out some questions and stuff today. And uh-huh. I was looking through your IMDB and there was a project on there. And I, I wanted to ask you, because I know I've seen, like, I follow you on Twitter and everything. And, um, yeah. You talk about your faith. And I saw that you did the voice hmm. of Jesus for a project called uh, Walking with the Promise. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, I, it's a, uh, it was a small project. It, it wasn't a big, big thing, but my buddy actually, who I work, he's one of the guys I work with at Universal. He's, uh, he comes from a more Catholic, uh, background of faith. And, uh, but he wanted to put together a, uh, an audio drama of the passion. Mm-hmm. So, um, and it, it's, it's available on YouTube. I think you can watch the whole thing. He didn't want to get, a, you know, he wasn't looking to make a huge amount of money off it. He just want, but, but his brother or I think it was his brother had painted these really beautiful paintings of the passion and different aspects of it. And so they wanted to kind of do it, but they wanted to flesh out some other aspects of it that maybe don't get normally looked at. And, uh, you know, he had asked me about it, uh, when he was putting it together. He said, I really think you're great. Jesus says, thank you. That's awesome. Um, uh, and I remember, uh, when I went to record, just really enjoyed it. That's really blessed part of that. That's, that's really awesome. Cause I mean, it's just kind of, I think there's certain characters or figures, um, you know, religious figures or not that mm-hmm. mean something to you that when you are, kind of like okay for this incarnation you represent this there's a, there's a weight to that you know and oh man without a doubt i mean like I, I you try not and you try not to get in your head about it because i think that you know if you do it's that's death as an actor because then you you just really like you're so like geeking and it was hard for me to keep my head about me when i was doing super too but uh but you know yeah <laughs> for obvious reasons uh but even as jesus you, it, it's like your your goal is you still got to make these people real and attainable and and make these characters and voices live in a, in a real way so if you're not in a good space with your fandom then it's not going to work <laughs> you know 
<laughs> so, I mean, the thing is, where do you go from here, though? I mean, Jesus and Superman, there's not really... <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, I'm laughing because uh, Butch Lukic, the uh, the producer on JLA, <laughs> you know he he's such a he's such a funny guy. He's he's, uh, he's been at a, he's only come to a few comic cons, but he's done he's been involved with the DC animation since the Batman series. But he said the same thing. So, Where do you go now? <laughs> and I I said, don't say that. I hope there's more left in my. That's right. Yeah. It's like two of the biggest roles there is. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's true. That's true. I, I, I think it's only going up from here is going to look really interesting. So, Speaking <laughs> right. of uh, more, is there going to be a, a, a Justice League action season two? Like, are there, is there more to come? I hope so. I, uh, I haven't heard anything official. Um, it, it's so weird how they do cartoons and, you know, um, cause, you know, like I was at McDonald's and they, they have a resurgence of Happy Meals of Justice League action. And I was like, yes. I was like, cool. It's like my kids have been like, let's go to McDonald's, daddy. Only one can I, talk, but you know. Yeah, I was so thrilled to see that. And I think it's probably just cause it, it just got on Hulu. So they're probably doing some other, you know, tie in and stuff, you know. Um, and I'm hoping like that gains, you know, more traction because, you know, in the old cartoons, like they would do like a 13 episodes and then mm-hmm. season two would be like 40. <laughs> yeah. Well, when I, it was, I, I get the impression, uh, you know, without saying too much, cause I don't, I don't want to speak into the, you know, I, I don't know. There's so many moving parts to anything when you're an actor. Um, and you're usually the last one to know. Uh, which is the sad part. Um, but I get, you know, I get the impression that the, the production workflow of this was, was very different for everybody involved. Um, that was kind of the, the feeling I got from everybody. And, uh, they were very excited about it, but I think they were just going about it in a very different way than typically they had. Um, so I think it all made them a little bit like, well, I don't know what's going to happen because they just didn't know. And, um, there is a lot of, I guess there's a lot of political stuff between Cartoon Network and Warner Brothers, and I, I didn't know all that, uh, but I think that has a lot to do with why the show. Yeah, kind of I mean, especially not, with the new, well, what are your thoughts on the new streaming service? Just real quickly. I'm I'm excited about it. I was hoping that would mean that they would might as well bring us back for, you know, another season on there. I, but I, I think that... Um, and I don't know this for sure, but this is just me. I think there's some kind of contractual thing with Cartoon Network that I, they have to, like, do. I think they have a right of first refusal or something to that effect um, in, in dealing with the series. So I don't know, and I don't want to speak to any of that because right. it's far above my pay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, but, uh, but I think that it's, uh, I yeah, think there's something to do with that where they, they have to wait till that happens so they can forward. And, and so I don't. It's just, it's a, it's really unfortunate because I feel like the show is so good. And I really, yeah, everybody listening, watch it, watch Justice League action on Hulu. Yeah. And I will say, <laughs> what's great about it is the Justice League action gave me two episodes now that are cemented in my holiday viewings. The, uh, the trick or treat episode is a great yes. one uh, yes, for is. Halloween. And then the Christmas episode is a great one to add to our, uh, DC Christmas list. Heck yeah, man. That just rips your heart out that one. I, I remember when we, uh, we recorded it, it was around Christmas actually. And, uh, we were like, Oh my gosh, that people are going to have to wait till at least next year to see this. Oh my gosh. We were so like, this is so good, you know, and people are going to love this episode because it's got such heart, you know, it does. I mean, I, it's right there now with, uh, comfort and joy and mm-hmm. Joker. It's like those, three yeah. my, my every year at Christmas, we have like the, the DC viewing of Christmas, and then we read Batman Noel. Oh my gosh, I love it. That's so fun, you guys. I, that's that's great. I love hearing stuff like that. That's really cool. I, I, I uh, try to do stuff with my kids, like um, for sure, man. Now you have how many kids do you have? We have uh, two. Um, I have a five-year-old and an almost two-year-old. He'll be two in October. Hey, uh, I have a three and a one. So. Oh my gosh! Yeah, so you—it's not that different, actually. It's pretty same age difference, and uh, yeah, you're you're gonna find that that's a really good age difference. 
<laughs> I've got nine and an eight-year-old. Oh yeah, uh, she looks like a cutie. I see her in your picture there. Uh, that's really sweet, man. And they uh, they all love comic books, or they kind of like, man, dad, you're weird. I was I wanted to ask like what what do you what do your kids think that you do like when daddy goes to work do they know that you're Superman it's it's, it's interesting because I my five year old is starting to kind of I mean well I will say when she was three it really kind of she started to kind of wrap her head around it because the show came out when she was about three and you know we had a big party and and uh, she she kind of she came with us to Comic Con you know and and saw me up on the panel and so so it was kind of beginning to be cognizant with her that that was you know happening and I think my my son hadn't been born yet um, had he I don't think he had he been born yet I don't think he was born yet um, yeah because I think it was just it would have been too tough yeah he wasn't born yet uh, but uh, but it was a really fun Comic Con because she just was like, "Oh wow, that's really cool!" And she was like, "Oh cool, a cartoon to watch," you know. <laughs> She's—I don't think she realized that it was Daddy up there totally, although she kind of knew, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but now she's become a little more cognizant of it, and uh, and that's really cool. But my son, who's almost two, he gets it. Like I point to Superman, like Daddy, and he's like, "Daddy, Daddy!" And every time he sees it, he's just like, "Daddy." You know, so uh, <laughs> we haven't watched any episodes with him yet because he's not you know, he's not quite old enough uh, to really wrap his head around it. But um, but my daughter has and she loves it. And actually, she's really into the DC superhero. She really likes that. Yep, I've um, watched I've watched those. And my my Solomon loves Batman. He loves Superman <laughs> too. But he yeah, yeah. Batman, he, he takes the cake, and that's okay. It's all right. It's okay. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but we'll watch anything with any of them, you know, and he'll, he'll bring his sister and he's like, you're Supergirl. Like, <laughs> well, it was, <laughs> he's like, I'm Superboy. I'm like, yeah. All right. What about you, James? Uh, it, it, uh... Um, yeah, both, uh, uh, both of my kids, they, they enjoy, uh, they enjoy comics. Um, mm-hmm. they watch, they watch, uh, the majority of the cartoons with me, um, movies. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they, a while back when, um, one of the only things I had before, you know, when the DC animated movie line was coming out, um, you know, one of the only things I had at the time was the Superman animated series. Yeah. They watched, I mean, they watched that with me over and over again. Nice. Uh, My daughter has uh, a couple of super, uh, DC superhero girl movies. Um, she's got some of the toys. Uh, mm-hmm. She loves toys, so she's got some super uh, some superhero dolls. Yeah, and, and um, um, my son loves video games, so um, mm-hmm. you know he plays he he loves playing Injustice. He's, oh, cool! He's doing Sonic right now, but um, he always okay. goes back to Injustice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, great. Um, well, we went. And, he he picked out a Superman shirt for school this year, so that was nice. awesome. Good. Nice. And <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're both into superheroes. Um, for their reading homework and stuff, they actually prefer to read comics as opposed Good. to books. Good, that's okay. That's so, cool. and my daughter's a little artist, so hey, I would argue that graphic novels are, are very much literature. You yeah, know? I would. Too. I think that. No case to be made for that, especially when you read stuff like Watchmen. You're like, that's that's literature, man. That's yes. not yes. comic books. That's literature, and that's that's a whole other level of, of writing well, even, and history. So, yeah. Well, even when it comes to you know comic books, I mean, even if she's reading My Little Pony, which you yeah. know she she reads My Little Pony comic books, um, you know she there there's a lot of um, imagination that comes into play with you know. Putting putting the art together with the story, mm-hmm. um, you know, and and watching it play out in your head from panel to panel, as opposed to just filling in those well, panel uh, gaps. Like right. Yeah. I, line creeps I've started. The... Go ahead. Sorry. No, no. I was like, your <clears throat> your mind creates the movie as you look up panel to panel. Totally. I think that's my daughter is. Uh, I got her some of the DC superheroes comic books too, and uh, she loves reading them. Like, I mean, for a while there, it was all we'd read at bedtime, you know. Uh, and it was to the point last year where actually she was Poison Ivy. 
<laughs> Which I was like, I don't know what that says here, but I, okay, I'm, I'm not well, going to read I got, much I got one for you, being that you're Superman and all. My son's been on a big kick where his favorite character is Doomsday. Oh, no way. Wow. Like, well, so um, he's like, he wants to play in Justice 1 so he can be Doomsday. He always <laughs> really, he, want, he calls it the Doomsday game. Uh, uh, I found like <laughs> one of those, you can read kid books, like Volume 2, where it's yeah. Superman fighting Doomsday. Um, That's cool. And then the kicker was we were at the Target, and uh-huh. we found one of those Imagine X toy sets that was Superman and Doomsday. Oh, and wow. I, was like, I was like, man, I gotta buy this. I, <laughs> I was like, he was like, Doomsday. So now he's like obsessed with Target. He's like, let's go back to Target, Daddy. <laughs> oh, like, man. He's always like, That's Doomsday. Hysterical. I'm like, man, son, like, what's up with you? Like, wanting to watch Doomsday. I'm like, yeah. That's really funny. Well, it, and well, my daughter, she's. She likes poison ivy, but only the nice poison ivy, like mm-hmm. when she's nice, you know, and she understands that she gets bad. And, uh, but it's funny because like she, I've all, she hasn't seen Lord of the Rings or Star Wars yet. We haven't watched it, but I, we read the stories and I'll tell her the stories, uh, you know, just off the top of my head too. And, uh, she, when she was younger, she kind of just fixated on Shelob. When I talked about her in, in Lord of the Rings, and she just wanted to know all there was to know about Shelob, and so it got to the point where we'd go on walks where there's this one little hillside where she'd be like, "That's oh, Shelob's house. I'm gonna go play with him." And <laughs> I was like, "Okay, that's cool." Kids got the best you know? imagination. No, man, I don't want to quench that. I was like, I was like, I'm not gonna tell her she's evil. Like, you know, she'll get it. You know, it's cool. She, but like, she wants to she, redeem her. Like. Yeah, she does. She's like, she's nice. She love. It's okay. I was like, oh, good, good. That's, fine. you know, and and you know, now as we're learning, I guess in the uh, the video games, she loves got quite a history. Uh, you know, yeah. I don't know if you played the Shadow of War or whatever. What's the what's Shadow of Mordor? The first one, right? Yeah, Shadow of Mordor and then Shadow of War, and I guess that uh, she love plays kind of a, a big role in the second one. Um, we got the first one. My wife's more of the gamer. I I like the oh really okay, and I'll play. Like I got, I got jokes where I was like, for like three months there, I didn't have a wife. I had a roommate who just sat on the and <laughs> played Assassin's Creed. And, uh, wow. wow. We were at, we were at WizardCon and I met Matt Ryan, who is oh, wow. Constantine. Uh huh. And she didn't realize, she's like, oh, cool, Constantine. But then when she found out like he did the voice of, uh, was it Edward from Assassin's oh, Creed 4? That's right. right. That's right. She, that's when she lost her junk. Like, wait a minute. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've done a few video games. I did, um, I, I mean, you may have seen, I haven't done them in a while. Space Champs. Yeah, Space Champs. Right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the legendary Space Champs game. I'm a walking IMDb. That's what What's I'm, that? Everyone always I said I was a walking IMDb at work. Yeah, I, uh, I, it's funny because the Space Chimps thing, I mean, I actually had a blast recording that and the cutscenes look really good. The game's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, a, it's not a very exciting game. But it's, uh, I mean, it's, but you know, I was very proud of my work in it. So, I mean, that, that's the best you can do. I mean, especially in the field of acting or whatever, like maybe the, the, the sum of the whole, you know, isn't great, but what you did or what you yeah. brought, um, I see you brought, you did Saints Row. Uh huh. Yeah, I did a bunch of characters on Saints Row. I can't even remember them. Big game hunter. Yep. Yeah, I was a not a huge character on that, but he's in like the first level or two. It's, Mafia. He wanted two. like a, yeah, Mafia Two. I did a, a Frankie Potts for that. It's, uh, it was part of the DLC, but Halo Five. Yeah, man, that was fun. That's awesome. You've done a nice array of work. Like it's like you've dabbled in everything. That you can do as, excuse me, as a voice actor. Well, I've been, I've been, I will tell you, I've been very blessed and very fortunate to to have you know those opportunities. And it was weird, man, when it, when I started uh, right before I got JLA, I, I was working on Swamp Talk with DreamWorks, the Donkey and Shrek shorts, you know? and mm. uh, and then I got JLA, and then it just for the next year or two, it just felt like everything was firing on all cylinders. I did, uh, you know, Infinity 3.0, I did Five. It was like, I was just like on this roll where I was like, what is, this is amazing. And, 
it is true. I think there's this kind of this weird ebb and flow to things, you know, where you just kind of don't really understand what all happens. And then now it's kind of been actually a really slow year. So it's, you know, we, we, we stopped recording JLA, I think about a year and a half ago. Actually. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And, and so, cause when you think yeah. about that, yeah. when you record to like, when you actually, ex- like we get to experience. Oh man. And- yeah. We, we did our last ADR session, I think in, in May of, 2017 so yeah it was, it was weird man to to do that be like say goodbye to it be like man like it just was so unceremoniously like, like okay we're done you know yeah. <laughs> okay guys let's, let's let's hang out you know justice yeah right. <laughs> well Wes, Wes not, Lucy, not quite the not quite the rap party huh yeah well what was cool is i mean I will say what's been fun is when the last couple of years at Comic Con is they'd let us go to the, the Warner Brothers party at Comic Con. San Diego. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I will tell you, I will feel like a small fry in that place because, <laughs> you know, I was rubbing shoulders with the casts of like the Flash and like, you know. Hey guys, I voice Superman. <clears throat> yeah. And I was like, Hey guys, you know, and you know, when I saw Full City Smoke, I was like, <laughs> uh, I'll, like keep I'll my, be over here. Yeah, I was like, I'm Superman. She's like, great. And, like, yeah. and then Tyler Heckman yeah. walks by. Never mind. I'll be over yeah, here. Yeah, I was like, yeah, okay. And, so, uh, but it was, it was shows? wild. Man. What's that? Do you watch the DC shows? I, I'm totally behind on them, but I love them. I think they're really great. And I, I just haven't had a whole lot of time to, to watch it. But I was like, you know what? I will eventually. Cause I, I truly love the Flash show. I thought it was great. And I, I love Supergirl. I think it's a lot of fun. I haven't gotten as much into Legends, but I really like, you know, Legends. I'm, I just, I think it's, I just haven't had a chance to really I will get tell into you, it. I will tell you. Legends season three was a surprising, great season. Yeah. Like, I, and I, I slug- was like, uh, on the season, but people told me to come back to it. And I watched all of season three. And I'm yeah. like, okay, I'm back. Yeah, that's great, man. Well, I, just the fact that that content exists and is out there on a regular basis yes. bodes well for everything, I think. I posted something the other day that was like, in 2001, the DC and Marvel TV shows we had were Smallville. Smallville. Yeah. <laughs> now we have like 16 of them. Dude, it's it's so great. And I mean, and I, I've slugged through seasons one of Arrow, and I I just have been struggling to, to, to find my way through that. But it's season it's, four. It's like, just, I know. I've heard they just go to season four. It's much better. So <laughs> when you get to season four, you watch the Constantine episode, and then you just jump into five, and you're like, "This is a good show again." Yes. Yeah, so that con- I've heard about that Constantine episode. I heard that was pretty legit because I think that was happening when we were recording, and they they wanted to get him to to record Constantine, but they they got someone else. Yeah, it's it's crazy how like you know he had his show, and it was a great show, and. Yeah, we were, uh, you know, they've been able to keep him around and keep that character alive, and now, you know, he'll yeah. be in Legends this this season. And that it's, is great. It's just nice how they can keep that universe building. And yes, they're. I think they're doing a really nice job on the TV. I don't know why they're not letting it mingle with the film because I think it'd be so great, you know. And I just. Uh, they they really like to for whatever reason they really they seem to really silo those things like that's TV this is film and this is animation and this is even direct to video stuff like they have like such a different they're like this is our thing for this and they cannot cross over you well, know it's compartmentalized like, yeah. but then yeah but then we've, you see those wild things like the Scooby Natural episode which, uh, which awesome uh, you know that was awesome. yeah yeah, yeah that's great. and yeah, uh, me and our, Tyler have talked about that. Uh, you know, DC's definitely embraced their, um, multiverse thing, but it's, it's, yeah. it's messed up when they, when they try to limit one to try and benefit the other. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, yes. Like I not agree. be able to use a character on television or something because they yeah. want to use them in the movie. Well, you yeah, know, I, I mean, if it's a multiverse, they should be able to exist in, in both, in multiple, mm. multiple mediums. Well, you know, and I don't know if this has a whole lot to do with it, but I know that, um, you know, when I just working it for in this business as long as I have, um, and being, it's, it's very, it's become very corporate and, and a lot of things are very data driven now. Um, and it's, it's, 
it's well, and it, and I can understand it, but and I'm not even saying data is bad. I just think it's bad if that's all you use to mm-hmm. to make decisions. You know, if you don't have vision behind that data, I think you're you're really setting yourself up for a very mediocre thing. And I think that that's I don't know how much of that is influencing these decisions at all, but I I suspect that it's probably more than we know <laughs> based on how the content turns out. So. Mm-hmm. It, it may, I mean, it makes sense, you know, just sometimes things are made with, like you said, the numbers and not the yeah. feelings. But, right. So who would you say is your favorite live action Superman? You know, I mean, I, I will say it's always been Reeve and I don't think that's going to change. Um, you know, Christopher Reeve, I should say, <laughs> um, but, uh, but, uh, I, I really, I, I, I've enjoyed Cavill's work, you know. Um, I think, I think even he sees the frustration. I mean, I, I feel like he wants to do more with the character than the universe is really letting him do. Um, you know, it's almost like I kind of see that frustration mm-hmm. as an actor, but he, you know, he, uh, he is bringing a lot of sincerity and, and, um, some really nice moments with him, especially in, I think, uh, you know, uh, Batman, Superman, and uh, and Justice League. A lot of people hated those movies, but I, I didn't. I didn't hate them at all. I thought they're actually quite good, and and um and they're, they're gonna they're gonna stand the test of time in a different way. I think we're hey, gonna look we, back. We, and go, you know, we're, those with, are probably the, we're with you on that. Yeah. yeah. I I mean, you know, we, we've talked here before. It's like I think every Superman kind of has its own like point in my life, but like. I really identify with Tom Willard on Smallville because, mm, you know, that for sure. hit when I was in high school. Yeah, man. I, I totally through, get that. I went through high school and kind of grew up. I mean, mm-hmm. that show started when I was in high school. It ended after I graduated college and had just gotten married. Dude, that's I, – I totally get why that would – I mean, and that was a great show, man. That was a really good show. Um, I enjoy. It really got great in the later seasons. I think they started kind of expanding the universe. I Absolutely. feel like well, I've, I've talked about with a good friend of mine who does a Smallville podcast. Like the first four episodes is like one, like if you wanted to bring it down, like one group of a movie. Yeah, and for then sure. like five, six, and seven is like this other middle chapter, and then <laughs> eight, nine, and ten is like your final third. Like if you looked at it as like a trilogy style, that's, for sure. That's where you get your like kind of groupings of story and like the for theater. sure. And I think probably, you know, you probably saw some showrunner change hands and things like that. And, you know, I mean, yep. that's, but I think it's really, it's, it was a, it was a really, I mean, it was really fun to have that show on, but you're right. It's just now it's so saturated, uh, with, uh, with all that stuff. It's, it's a whole different world. You know, that show couldn't exist probably. Now. You know, that's, that's what's so interesting. So. Oh, it, it would probably be torn down the way, mm-hmm. the way things are today. I mean, yeah. There's so much out there, and yet people are complaining complaining about it more than ever. Yeah, and I think that I don't know what that. It, it's an interesting thing you say because I, I agree. It's really like a it's a bizarre dichotomy. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's and I think it's it's indicative of a bit of fandom in some ways. You know, <laughs> it's like you know, it's like now that we've got the internet kind of on blast all the time, all the dark places of the internet that we're always. <laughs> that way they're on blast now so it's kind of like you know and the and the the public at large is just starting to kind of get the impression oh okay people have a lot of opinions about this <laughs> so, yep <laughs> yeah and so, they gotta be I, quite harsh yeah quite harsh opinions. with their opinions i, I always kind of go back to what i tell solomon when he wants to dress up as spider-man i'm like yeah. i'm like listen son in my day if i wanted to be spider-man i had a red ski mask and i used my imagination yeah. I'm like, you just walk into hands Walmart. Against the wall. I'm like, you walk into Walmart, you can pick up a Spider-Man costume or a really nice mask. Okay? Yeah. Just be happy with what you have. <laughs> Seriously. No, that's a really good point. I mean, it's, it's, that's so true, man. And for me, when I was growing up, uh, you know, we didn't have, it was, we didn't have quite the hero saturation we had now. We still had to go to the comics for that. Um, you know, but having the Superman movies, having Indiana Jones and, and Ghostbusters and all those things, I mean, it was still the same thing. You just, you, you just had different heroes, you know? Mm-hmm. So, but I don't know. What are some other things you guys want to know? 
I want to ask you, I thought we could talk forever, and I don't want to take up too much of your time. No, I know. Me too, yeah. <laughs> I do, I do want to ask you, um, what's, is there a project or something that you would like, would be kind of like your, uh, I'm getting tired, I can't think straight, um, like a project that you would want to do that is just kind of like your uh, personal passion. project, passion, yeah, passion project, oh. like either live action acting or voice work. Is there something that you would like to do that you would just that's always kind of been there for you? Ah, that's a really interesting question. Let me think about that. Um, hold on. No, you're fine. Because because I feel like yeah. Um, wow, that's a, you know there is actually I, I will say there is now that I'm thinking about it there uh, was a series of books that I read as a teenager that I would personally love to see turned into like, now that we have stuff like Game of Thrones, I mean, at the time, you know, I saw them as movies, but now we have th things like Game of Thrones where you can just dig into all that lore and create a series of, but I would love to see uh, a series of books called well, several, several series of books. One called the Dragon Cycle uh, by uh, Stephen Lawhead. I actually, would love to be a part of bringing that to, uh, you know, to reality. Cause there, it was, uh, the, the Arthurian legend, legends rewritten, uh, with a lot of history underneath them, not just fantasy. And so it kind of became this bizarre historical fiction. Um, and the guy who wrote it had kind of a Catholic, uh, Christian background. So he kind of added this really neat, uh, spirituality to it that, that just what made it really come to life. Okay. Um, and he even kind of blended in the legends of Atlantis. That's it's, cool. It's great. If you ever get a chance to read it, it's called The Dragon's Cycle. There's five books. There's Taliesin, uh, Merlin, Arthur, and Dragon, and Grail. What's and the author's name? Uh, Stephen Lawhead. Okay. Yeah. And he, he's written quite a few series. Um, I'm in the midst of his l latest one. And by latest, I mean in the last, you know, five, six years. Uh, it's, and it's a retelling of the Robin Hood, uh, kind of legends. Uh, so he likes to kind of do those things where he takes those things and spins on their head a little bit. Um, I think he wrote that, enough. That can What's be good. That? that can be bad. You know, like, like, exactly. like, like we had the Guy Ritchie's King Arthur movie. Kind of bad. Yes. Kind of bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and it wasn't, and he doesn't do it. I think that this would be like on a par with Game of Thrones, personally, mm -hmm. the way he That's tells us. So I think I, I'd be all be I'd be all in on that. Um, the other one is a, a Song of Albion, and that's a trilogy. And that's he gets into Celtic mythology there, so he kind of delves into some of the the Celtic mythology and retells it in a way that you know is a little more serviceable and a little bit uh, more modern. Uh, but it's it has a very kind of Chronicles of Narnia feel to it. Um, it's really good in that sense, really. So, that sounds interesting. I, I'm always looking yeah. for stuff to read. Dude, it, read these books. You will you will be blown away by his his literary uh, prowess because he does a ton of research, um, and it shows because it just there's it, it's like especially in the uh, Pendragon cycle because he sets it in um, Roman Britain when you know the time of the real time of King Arthur. We often think of it as being like. You know, in 1100, you know, in the Dark Ages. No, King Arthur was around 5, 600 AD when the Roman Empire was in Britain. And that's, that's, uh, so that's a whole other backdrop of drama that they had to. So it's really great. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah so I, mean, I love those, the stories that, I love the stories that take place during the, the real time of King Arthur. Yeah. Yeah. Me too, man. And I, I think it's really great when they, they can bring that to the table. I, I actually would like to also, uh, do an, my own animated series of some kind in some way, but how or why or what that would look like, but I would like to, you know, use my talents as a voice actor to kind of bring my own content alive. So the Avengers of yeah. and friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I suspect it will have something to do with uh, all my favorite things, comedy, Facebook. Why not? I mean, the technology today and the fact yeah. that <laughs> animation, a lot of it's yeah. very simplistic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, 
but you got, and then, um, I, I, there's also some things I need to do just for myself. I'm, I'm trying to put together, uh, a reel for the fans of all the different characters I do on JLA. Um, but I have to get the content first and it's just, it's really hard to actually access it to, to, to try to create stuff out of it. What other uh, legally, characters legally, I should say, legally. What's that? What are, what are some of the other characters that you do? Um, I, I do Zod, oddly enough. And, uh, um, a couple, the, yeah. And a couple episodes that he's there. And then I also do, uh, Desad, who's a minion of, uh, that's dark cool. side. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then I also do, uh, I think they, they had me do just kind of a few like barks and meows for crypto and, and uh, streaky. Uh, and that was really fun in the booster gold episode when they, uh, <laughs> He's in there, the watchtower. Um, and it's really funny. Uh, and then, uh, I think the, what's the cat, the red lantern, red lantern cat? I can't think of his name. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dexter. Yeah. Dexter. Yeah. They had me do some meows for Dexter and stuff. Um, and then I did red tornado, like, I think one or two lines. Uh, yeah. I mean, I was, I mean, I did Carmine Falcone for an episode. That was, uh, nice. there was like, was that, that a, yeah, that awesome. Batman Blue Beetle episode? Yes, yes, where he goes back in time. We were talking yeah, about that because it's, <laughs> it's got the lightning thing and he gets out the car and all the. <laughs> How <laughs> fun was that, man? Like, can we talk about that? That was just so fun. Like when I read that episode, I, I peed my pants because I was like the fan. You know, <laughs> that, that's what I like about the series is like, it it takes itself serious, but in the sense of. We know all of the stuff. We can <laughs> poke fun that things or kind of yeah. make references to any time or any yeah anything that's ever happened to this character. You know, for sure, um, sure. So it's just well that kind of that kind of uh, goes in into what I was going to ask. How DC, how they use voice actors for a lot of different parts. Mm. Uh, if you were to. Um, Move, if they wanted to use you for something else, uh, one of the animated features or something like that, is there a, another character that you would enjoy playing? Oh, that you would enjoy I, talking? I would, I would, I'm not lying when I say I would, I would relish the opportunity to, to dig into Batman, um, and put my own take on it. Um, uh, even though Kevin's take is so perfect, um, you know, it would be a lot of fun to, to just kind of find some new territory with that. Um, and then, um, you know, I don't know. I think doing a villain would be fun. I, I think it was fun when I did Carmine Falcone and Zod. It was like in the Zod and stuff. I really relished those villain voices. It, it That's when you can really kind of play a little bit. Uh, you know, with Zod, it was funny when, when, uh, when Wes kind of threw it at me. He, uh, we, we talked about it briefly. I said, are you looking for like the, Shannon, are you looking for more like the Terrence Stamp? And he's like, why don't you Terrence Stamp it up? And I was like, all right, let's do that. <laughs> and, uh, that is now an expression. Let's, let's Terrence Stamp that up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, and, have, uh, <laughs> have you watched any of the Krypton TV series? I haven't yet, actually. Okay. Uh, I, I don't, I really I don't want to give about. anything away because yeah. since you are a Zod, yeah. too, and you are <laughs> a L. Yes. James knows where I'm going with this, but I just can't give anything away, Jason. You can't give anything away. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm I'm very excited because I definitely want to uh, check it out. I just haven't had a moment to do it, but I was excited to see they were coming out with it because I was like, that should be really interesting. And I, um, yeah, when you get a chance, it it was it is very interesting. And is it still going? Is it done or is it uh, the first two? season is done? Yeah, okay. season two will be next year. Good. It's only ten we'll episodes, it so it'll be a quick. It's not. It's a quick watch, and it goes. Oh, okay. it, all right. Well, now definitely check it out. I, I just you know, it's like we we were also uh, fostering a little bit uh, this year, and so uh, that Ooh. that kept our lives real busy. So, for a while. <laughs> all right. Um, I guess I guess we'll wrap up here. Like I said, I feel like we could just chit chat forever. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, and I, I, I really appreciate it. I, I know I'm giving you a lot of content to edit, so I apologize. Oh, no, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna edit some stuff up and send it over to my friend. He's, uh, he owns a recording studio and he'll help me clean up some of it to kind of fit that sound. We can kind of work around that a little yeah, bit. Sure. Um, sure. figure out what happened there for a while. 
Um, yeah. Could be my internet. Who knows? I live in the middle of a cornfield, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there That's so? Wild. <laughs> oh man, I <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I live in Smallville, basically. Uh, is yeah. There, it's... Is there anything that you have coming up on the horizon you'd like to talk about? Like any projects, anything that you're doing that oh. you kind of want to oh. get out there and let people know about? That's a thank you, and I appreciate you asking that. I um. There is a, uh, there's a film that I've been shooting bits and pieces of over the, over this year, a on camera film. Um, and I'm really trying to get back into the on camera game. Um, and, and so I've been trying to like just, you know, lose weight and get in better shape and just really get back into that, you know, fighting stance, so to speak, the fighting weight and just really, cause I really feel like I have a lot to offer in that way. And, I, and when I do it, I just so enjoy it. Mm-hmm. It's just, such a it's such a blast uh, being a part of that process and uh, a lot of people don't it's it is a hard process <laughs> as an actor people think oh movie stars are great but when, and it is if you're doing the multi-million dollar films they're they're amazing and they'll take great care of you but when you're doing indie film it's hard work you know and you know you're oftentimes moving set pieces with people and you know you're not just acting you're you're really a part of the whole production you know and that's fine i dig that i think that's actually really fun for me um but uh there's a it's a, called the burden of the shepherd um and i'm playing a, a really dirty cop in this one so it's another villain character uh that i get to mess around with and uh i'm really excited about it because uh we we haven't quite finished shooting my scenes uh because we've been shooting this on a very long schedule just because everyone has a, a lot of other things going on and their budget's very well now we have money let's shoot some more so. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, yeah, and it is, and it's that's the way it goes, man, when you don't have a big studio behind you. But I still think great actors can come up with great content and, and so forth in in that light. And um I'm not sure when that's gonna come out, but uh but keep your eyes peeled out. I'll of course announce anything that I find out. Um and then uh let's see, there's there's a movie I did with uh, Dante Bosco called Sightings. Um and that's uh that's out right now, it's on iTunes. It's a it's a a Bigfoot thriller, and I play uh, a really kind of dopey small town Texas sheriff who gets involved in this uh, Bigfoot uh, mystery kind of a thing. So, uh, it's, it, yeah, it's it's really funny. I, I my character is very silly. It's it's very. They wanted him to kind of be like the Dewey of, of uh, this movie from Scream. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, so that was you know very David Arquette kind of vibe, you know. Um, so I was, I was, I loved it. I had a blast doing that too. And that was, uh, and Dante plays, uh, uh, the scientist that comes in, kind of like <laughs> analyze this big, he's, he's been a lot of fun shooting in Texas. Hey, that's, you know, one of the best books I ever read, I gave to my sister-in-law, um, before she was my sister-in-law, when she was my friend, mm-hmm. was Bruce Campbell's, uh, biography where he, oh yeah. Out. And I thought, uh-huh. you know, like for anybody who's into acting, like just the, the the mindset that he had going in of just like, you know what, I didn't get this part, but I got a three day or a week vacation in Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> All right. For, exactly. For our listeners, I was doing a little research. Sightings, the movie Jason was just talking about here, is on Amazon Prime. Oh, it is. Oh, great. So, awesome, man. I didn't, I didn't realize you put it up there. That's great. And there's a there's one that was a horror movie. If you really want to see me do some nasty, uh, be a nasty character, uh, I, I'm in this uh, movie called Run Like Hell, and it's uh, I play like this very kind of dopey redneck lackey in this town that captures lost people and eats them. So um, <laughs> it's you know, it's, a, it's a very it's very fun. Got to eat. But, yeah, yeah. Tis but the, I uh, <laughs> tis the season. Yeah, yeah, but uh, but I play this. I had like long hair and everything. I looked really different, you know. So it's uh, it's really cool. I, I I had a lot of fun shooting that too. And and it is on Prime as well. Is it? Oh, good. All right on. I'm glad to glad to hear that. So the beauty yeah, so of the I, smartphone. I'm sitting here looking up your project, seeing if they're streaming. They're anywhere. awesome. <laughs> um, and I actually uh, I don't know. I I don't know. Um, I directed a animated film uh from. That we we dub into English, uh, Indonesia. It's called Little, but I don't know when that'll be out. But uh, surprise! That was my first attempt. Oh, I'm not sure when that's 
out, but it is. It's, 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 and what was the name of that again? It's called Little Hero. Little Hero. Pulling that yeah. up right now. It says coming soon. Yeah. Add to watch. It's me. on my. It's on the IMDb. I know that. Yeah. Uh, they there. So it's um, and uh, it was really fun to to be in the director's chair for that. So that that was a whole different ball game. But I will say that I learned so much. <laughs> from that experience. Well, so. I will definitely watch it when I can. Yeah, it's, it's a really cool. Good and Solomon and I are always like up for watching, you know, something different. If you, if you get a chance, I would encourage everyone to talk, uh, to check out the uh, swamp talk too on YouTube. Uh, all the shorts I did with uh, DreamWorks uh, as donkey. That's kind of one of my, uh, I'm, I'm actually one of the, uh, the approved donkeys now. So I, uh, I don't always get to match them, but uh, it's really fun to, to, to have all that content out there. I could um, make some jokes here, but this is a family show. <laughs> <laughs> well, <it's, laughs> I'm pretty sure I've heard them all. So. <laughs> you know what's funny, though, is uh, as much as I love Shrek and Donkey and everything, <laughs> Solomon just does not like Shrek. Oh, really? I don't That's know what so it is. He's like, he's like, Daddy, I don't like that. <laughs> so I don't know what it is, but my nephew likes it. So, <laughs> What about you, James? Your kids like it? Oh yeah, yeah. We all like Shrek. Um, yeah, yeah, me and my kids. Uh, we we've watched all four of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, I haven't seen too many. I haven't seen any of the shorts, so I'm gonna have to go look those up. Oh, they're great. But, Your kids will love them. They're really digestible. They're like two, three minutes long, and it's just it's really fun. That's um, perfect. They love YouTube, so I'm gonna have yeah. to bring them up. <laughs> I, I also, you can probably catch some of my work uh, in Universal Studios on on youtube <laughs> so just look up donkey at universal <laughs> he'll, he'll probably you'll probably find me uh, all right then uh, yeah i'm also doing transformers there at universal studios so i'm always there um they, they have talking transformer characters and stuff found it there it is you found it hey all right yeah, I uh, i'm gonna show solomon in the morning like hey that's this, buddy. something yeah. The, uh, yeah, we have talking transformers too at uh, Universal Studios, which is now that he'll like. Yeah, so there's uh, and I don't, I'm not on the YouTube with that a lot because I just the days I've done it haven't gotten recorded, I guess. But um, but yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun to do that. That is, <laughs> I mean, I hope someday I get to do it in like a cartoon respect of some kind because it's just so great. I want to, yeah, man. Yeah, I want to hear you. You know who I want to hear you like do something with. What What's that? What you were talking about earlier, I was going to mention you talking about voice actors and the acting part, even though it's the same voice. Mm-hmm. I've, <clears throat> I've always like really liked Will Friedle when he did Terry McGinnis on Batman Beyond, and then yes, uh, you know he did Lion O in the Thundercat reboot, which I thought was really mm-hmm. really good. And then Solomon, he likes to watch the Transformers, where he uh-huh. does Bumblebee, and it's like man, yeah. like he always brings a really good voice presence you know and yeah i agree i will's i think will is uh i think he's really uh he needs to get out there a whole lot more i mean he's always been a great actor and but he really does some nice work uh, i'm actually pretty good friends with jason marsden and he and will are, are good buddies i but, um but you're just not telling us that <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh yeah now jay but jay lives in uh in tennessee now so i don't get to really see him too much anymore. that's cool. but uh but yeah, he, he's, he's a really, uh, he's, he's always been super encouraging to me. And uh, when I was just starting out and, uh, always really supportive. Now, are you guys, uh, are you guys ever in California? Have you ever been out there? Uh, in I, LA? I hope to one day. I mean, I don't, I don't like to talk too much about myself with people because I don't want to say, like, Hey, but I'm in film school. Like I have a, my, I do online film school. Uh, Good. Good for you. Long story short, man. Um, my wife, we moved to North Carolina so I could go to film school there. Uh-huh. And then we'd had two miscarriages. And, uh, and then man. we moved there as a fresh start. And then we got pregnant sure. with Solomon and everything was great. But we moved, yeah. we moved back in case that she did lose it. I didn't want to be away from family. Um, yeah. Of course, so, of course. I mean, you know, the school is based out of uh, San Francisco. Uh huh. So, you know, I hope the whenever I graduate or whatever to either get out that way or uh maybe some of the east coast places and stuff so mm-hmm. we'll see. that 
Dude, that's great, man. Well, let me know if you guys are ever in LA, you know, uh, I'd love to say hi and invite, you know, get you to the theme parks and all that stuff. <laughs> oh, that'd be amazing. I mean, where, yeah. where do I, I eat? certainly want to go? <laughs> That's, was that? that's, that's always my thing. Like, I get out there like, where do I go to eat? <laughs> like, I'm only here for a short time. What's the best place to eat? <laughs> oh, that I can help you with, my friend. <laughs> I, hey, I, I, got some good I lift and I, I lift and I eat. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I lift my children and I eat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I my kids are, that. my kids are a little big for that now. Yeah. I guess when they get to that age, huh? It's like, uh, yeah, you don't, you don't. And and they still want you to go up, down, up, down, up, down. It's like you weigh like three times what you used to. <laughs> I take Calm my, down. my daughter. Yeah, she's yeah, my daughter's like almost forty pounds, and my son he's about twenty. So, you know, I you know if I can I can hold one of them at a time, but then it's when they want me to do two at a time that it starts to get a little bit tricky. You know? Yes, I'll do something with yeah. my daughter, and I'll be flipping her and like everything, and then right there, Solomon, like Daddy, my turn. I'm like no. no. You're, you're, you're a little too big for this one trip. Oh, huh? I know. <laughs> my daughter's the same way. Oh, yeah, like, when, no. when I occasionally, my kids will still want me to hold them for a few. And, sure. and then, and then once in a while, they'll both want me to do it. It's like, all right, this is like 200 pounds. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like this, I can't do this for very long. I know. <laughs> What's all that lifting for, James? <laughs> <laughs> gains, baby, gains. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, we, yeah, my pleasure. And you guys are a delight to talk to you. Thanks for being such great uh, hosts and and you know, asking some great questions. And you know, and if you if you guys want to do another one down the line, let me know. Yeah, I mean, I would love to. Like, uh, we'll set up another one. Maybe I'll do some uh, organize some questions. Maybe if we hear more about Justice League, or we just decide hey we just felt like talking with jason so we called him back you know what no and what we might try to do is uh i i'll see if we can get anyone else from the show with me that might be fun yeah uh, you know I'll, I'll reach out and just see if anyone's interested in uh, being a part of it um I'm, I'm still pretty good friends with rachel and uh who's a woman and she and i got really close during the show and and she just had a baby too so awesome um uh, you know she, well, Jason, yeah, we man. really appreciate talking with you and just yeah. kind of chit chat. You know, it's been great and laid back. And I keep forgetting, like Tyler, you're talking to Superman. <laughs> <laughs> you have his. Yeah, action. it's been a blast. Like, you have his yeah, action figure awesome. right there. Like I'm looking at your figure right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm looking at him too. It's really weird to think I have a toy. That's that's what's really. So. <laughs> but, we do appreciate you being here chatting with us. Yeah, is there any social media you'd like to drop where people could find out more oh, yeah. about you? Uh, please uh, follow me on Twitter. I'm more on Twitter than anything else. So at the, the JLU, T H E J L A W at the JLU. And um, if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's uh, at the underscore JLU. So it's pretty much the same thing. Um, and uh, I also have a, uh, a coaching and demo site called the voice reactor.com. Uh, if you, if anyone from anywhere is interested in, in getting coached or, or taking some time to just have questions, you want to email me. I mean, I'll always answer email questions, but if you want to do a more formal coaching thing, um, I can do that via Skype. Um, and if you want to put the, put a demo together, uh, you know, uh, you know, we can, we can talk about that and stuff. If you, if you're interested in that kind of thing, but if you just really have questions about voice acting, I am, of the mentality that, Hey, uh, I want to always be available to, to mentor and, and be there for people that are, are interested in that. So don't hesitate to reach out. If I don't get back to you right away, it's not cause I don't care. I just seriously have a lot going on, <laughs> but, but I will always, it. we've been yeah. working on this for like over a year. I know. So, <laughs> so uh, I will, but I will always get back to you eventually and I will always want to answer your questions and, um, don't, don't ever feel like you're bothering me or anything like that. I just, you know, uh, but the best way to, to, to get at me usually is through Twitter. Um, so I, I always have a really good, uh, you know, I like to get back easy to respond. Uh, but yeah, please don't, don't be afraid to chat. Well, like I said, thank you. I can't thank you enough for just yeah. taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. To hang out with you got you. it, guys. To hang out with two guys in Ohio. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, man. If I ever get out to Cedar Point, we'll we'll do it. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Straight oh. up.
I love Cedar Point. <laughs> yeah, I've never been. I've always wanted to go. And I, I'm, I, I, it's been oh, yeah. too long. Coasters are great. Cool. Yeah, great roller coasters at Cedar Point. Yeah, man. I, I'm a huge coaster nerd, so I, I'm all about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Well, take care, man. Have a good one. You too. All right. You too. Right. Good night. Look up in the sky. Look up in the sky. Look up in the sky. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Krypton Report. You can also email us at kryptonreportpod at gmail.com. If you get a chance to go over to iTunes, please leave us a review to help us get better. If you're an Amazon shopper, just remember you can go to southgatemediagroup.com. There's a portal to log into Amazon, and you shop into your account just regular, but it also helps keep all the podcasts on and helps keep Southgate running. Remember, look up in the sky.